Ben, what you got there? This is this year or this past summer's hatchling eastern indigo snake. Oh. That's probably like the single rarest thing we could possibly find on an indigo survey. Good morning, everybody from deep south Georgia. Today we are once again on the quest for some of the obscure snakes that barely range into Georgia from Florida. Um, but all around, just hoping to see some snakes. So we're gonna get to it and hopefully we'll be able to turn some stuff up. If we don't get our target, maybe we will at least see some uh, you know, common snakes or some of our more common target snakes like cane brakes or king snakes. So we can't find any snakes, but I did just flip a, uh, a mole under that log. <laughs> there he goes, back into his tunnel. That's kind of neat. That's a bagworm of some kind. I don't know much about them, but it's basically just like a, a larval cocoon type thing, I believe. All right, guys, so today was definitely a massive L in Georgia, but I have just crossed the state line into Florida to a familiar spot, and I just flipped these guys. This is a pair of black swamp snakes, one of the uh, snakes that we really wanted to find in Georgia on this trip, but, um, well, we're only a couple miles across the state line, and here we have a pair. These guys are really weird in that they actually dry out and desiccate and can die like a salamander if you don't keep them wet enough, so... They barely ever leave the water, and when they do, they don't go far. But one of the things that's really cool about them is their bellies. Look at that. They're like a black red-bellied snake. Such a very cool and unique snake to find. Um, we just got to get one in Georgia now, which I'm sure we will eventually, but it's going to take some time, and I think we'll probably have to find it crossing a road. Unless I can find an area like this in Georgia where there's rocks to flip on the edge of a swamp, which obviously those areas are pretty few and far between. But very, very cool, highly aquatic snakes that we do not get to see much on the channel. This might even be the first time I've shown them on the channel, honestly. I can't remember another time, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened. Another thing to note about these guys is they're just very small. They don't get too much bigger than this. The females might get a little bigger, but all the ones I ever find are this exact same size. All right, I just flipped a young two-toed amphiuma under a rock. If you have any experience with these guys, you know they are next to impossible to wrangle, and of course I don't have a tank, uh, so I'm using this piece of ambiguous fisherman's trash to contain him while I video, but for those who aren't familiar with these guys, they are a really cool, also nearly fully aquatic species that uh, very rarely leaves the water. And they are one of the main prey items of one of the coolest snakes around, the uh, eastern mud snake. So, I will try to get a little bit of video where you can see this guy's hands. Look at that. You can see his tiny little arms. But these things get massive. This is a very, very young one. I don't know how fast they grow, so potentially only a year or two old, if that. But they're capable of growing up to like three and a half feet. So very, very big salamanders. All right, just flipped a little baby banded water snake. This guy is really pretty. Tons of stuff out of this spot. I'm glad we stopped here because otherwise today would have been largely a bust. And here's another swamp snake, number three, as flipped. Look at that. As you can see, this one's the same size as the other two, but very, very pretty. They all kind of look the same, but they'll have varying degrees of uh, black on the belly and varying degrees of intense red. But all around, Always a beautiful snake. Look at that. And the next rock over. That is number four and the biggest one yet. I've never seen one do that. Defensive behavior. That is so cool. I do think this is probably the biggest one I've ever found. It's definitely a little bit bigger than the others. So gorgeous. All right, we'll let this one go. I was really hoping to see a mud snake today, but I'll take a couple of swamps. Look at that. Watch this. <laughs> That's a huge amphiuma. Well, there we go. Both ends of the amphiuma spectrum today. Tiny and very big. <laughs> These guys will bite you, so you have to be careful. Um, see if I can get a little bit of scale to this thing. Look at that. That is so cool. Look at this.
All right, this is probably gonna be our last snake of the day, but little ring neck, southern ring neck. You can kind of see he's got an unusually orange ring on his neck. Little baby from last year. Look at that belly. I lied. That's gonna be the last snake of the day. That's a band of water snake. But alas, it is time to once again head back north to the colder reaches of the south, back in North Georgia, so. I will probably pick this video up back there or next time we come back down south if it's too cold, so. I will see you guys next time. Good morning, everybody. We have returned from our South Georgia trip and are once again headed back to South Georgia because it is very cold in North Georgia. Um, we have a pretty gnarly February cold front in right now, uh, bringing some cold air in. Hopefully one of the last real cold snaps that we're gonna have this winter. But due to El Nino, the warm air is largely staying south though. So we're going to head south to catch up with it. It's gonna be in like the low 60s down there today. Um, obviously that's not great, but it's better than nothing. And we are going to be tagging along on an indigo survey today with the Orient Society. So there's a good chance that indigos could be out in this weather. And if not, maybe we'll see something else. So let's get to it. All right, everyone, we are out on the sand hill. We've got quite the survey crew with us today. Chad from uh, Missouri is in town. And we're here with Ben Stiginga from the Orient Society. But yeah, mostly going to walk around, poke around these entrances of tortoise burrows and hope to see some snakes coming out of them to bask in the sun. Today's conditions are pretty mid, if I had to say so. It's uh, quite sunny and around 60 degrees for a high. I bet we'll probably get up to the low 60s. So, decent weather, but not great, so. So we've got a, a gopher tortoise shell here, and what's really cool about this is actually, right next to it, was the skull. We see dead gopher tortoises fairly often, because their shells don't go anywhere when they die. It takes millennia for them to I mean, maybe not millennia, but it takes a long time for that shell to degrade. But to actually see a gopher tortoise skull is really neat. You can see they've got those, those crushing mandibles for eating vegetation, cactuses, berries, things like that. But really neat. Sad to see, but also cool at the same time, because that's not something you ever see on a living gopher tortoise, really. Ben, what you got there? This is this year, or this past summer's hatchling eastern indigo snake that's probably like the single rarest thing we could possibly find on an indigo survey yeah yeah <laughs> put it in context is only the third one i've seen in eight years of surveys holy cow so this is pretty special does the little guy have a tag i'm betting not no <laughs> who would have ever guessed <laughs> yeah. all right little guy's getting a fungal swab well that is Easily one of the coolest things I have ever had the pleasure of seeing in the field. Baby eastern indigo snakes are not often encountered at all. That is so unreal. And such a beautiful little snake too. I mean, it's just, it's a miniature version of the adults, which we've seen many times on the channel. So definitely a privilege to get to see something this rare out here today. And it's still pretty early. This is our first snake we found. So we're gonna work this guy up, take some quick measurements and uh, release him back to where we found him. But this is very likely the only hatchling eastern indigo snake I will ever see. I'd love to be wrong about that, but like I said, these do not come around very often, and I consider myself very lucky to have gotten to see this one today. So, all right, it's time for the young man to go free once again. Oh, he bypassed his hole. That was weird. Where are you going? Yeah, we'll see what he does. If he keeps going, we'll we'll reset him. I think it's uh, coming back to him, yeah. maybe. They'll often like overshoot just in an immediate fight or flight. There he comes. He figured out. Yeah, he's lasered in now. He still hasn't actually gone down it. It's, there's a bunch of leaves. I think he, he's he's prodding around down there looking for the opening. My man's hopeless. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what are you doing? It's behind you. I think his like mid body is actually in the opening. You're on top of your hole, dude. Back up. Yeah, there you go. Well, Diamondbacks will do the same thing. They get defensive and they just won't realize that they're in the opening of the burrow. It's so weird watching him like push the leaves around. Trying to find his hole. Better be glad nothing tried to eat him. Yeah, God. There he goes. He's he's, he's just digging around. That's that way. Yeah, he got it. Oh. Oh. Nice. Nice. All right. Well, great spot by Ben on our first snake of the day. It's around 12:30 now, so uh, a lot of the morning hours are behind us, but we still have the afternoon to potentially get into some more snakes. But if I haven't already uh, made it clear, finding a baby eastern indigo snake is honestly, I mean, that has got to be one of the single most ridiculously rare things that could have happened today. So very, very little is known about what baby eastern indigo snakes do. So any sort of observations that we can get of them in that age class are uh, very important to our comprehensive understanding of the species. Very, very special moment to get to witness here today. So we're gonna keep at it. Maybe we'll get to see a big adult next. Of course. Oh, Ben's just killing it out here. Yeah. Huge diamond back. Well, not gigantic, but that's a big snake. This thing's tail's looking a little bit not ideal. Is it like lesiony? I don't know. It almost looks like it has an injury or something down there around the cloaca. Hmm. Yeah. It's kind of dragon-like looking head. This is a big snake, but it is it's a little bit yeah, thin. You gonna come and see me? All right, well, since this lady is a little bit skinny, we're not gonna do too much processing. Just get some quick photos and leave her to it. But big diamondbacks, our second snake of the day, albeit a little bit thin. That is a five-foot snake now that I see yeah, her chest. It's cool how how uh, unicolor her tail is too. I like when they get like that. All right, here's one last look at this snake in its habitat before we move on. But big adult female Eastern Diamondback, right after the baby indigo. All right, it's about three o'clock, which means we're probably going to be winding down for the day here soon. But we had a nice little quality burst of midday activity. We don't see anything else i can't complain about that so we're gonna keep at it for another hour or so and if something else pops up great and if not i'll probably see you guys tomorrow just depends on how the rest of the day goes all right guys well apparently there is another baby indigo over here which is just insane what is going on I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? it he was, was in the palmettos. Yeah, so oh, wow. she was standing right there. I was looking here. A rodent went that way, and then I saw, I felt, felt, I heard something move right here, and I was just staring to see what, and that's what Chad saw was me. Another <laughs> baby <laughs> indigo. <laughs> incredible. Wow. That what? is incredible. That's <laughs> <laughs> what a day to be alive. <laughs> well, I was really talking about just how rare and special that last baby indigo was. And it still is very rare and special. But now we've seen two back to back. It just makes it even more ridiculous. And it's, this snake is basically a carbon copy of the last one. It looks like it's maybe a little bit, uh, has a little bit more growth on it. But, I mean, visually, as many black snakes are, it's very similar. But it's almost the same size and everything. Could even be siblings, but we are quite a distance away from where we found the first one. So I'd say more than likely, there's just a lot of indigos out here and they're reproducing successfully, which is exactly what you want to be finding on these kinds of uh, inventory surveys. So we're gonna process this snake and let it go. Take some pictures too. All right, baby indigo number two turned out to be a girl. So we got a girl and a boy today. And this one is a couple of centimeters longer and a little bit heavier. So ever so slightly, bigger than the first, but still definitely this year's baby. Ian just spotted an Eastern hog nose. Look at that. Oh, he's getting grumpy. 
Got him. Look at that. What a day. Nice spot, Ian. Yeah, he was he was tucked in there nicely. Good spot. Cool. So nice of him to not instantly die on us too. Yeah, what a yeah, nice yeah. unexpected treat. Hey buddy. Ooh. Sure does. Just doing a, <laughs> did a little, ooh, little projectile. Sorry about that. I can feel him gearing up. This guy is uh being pretty cooperative for a hog nose. No death so far. Just a lot of poop and hissing. All right, everybody. Well, it is actually getting late now. The sun is about to dip behind the trees. Despite how nice it was during the day, it actually is going to freeze again tonight. So uh, we are going to have a very cool morning tomorrow. But I think I am going to try to include that in a different video since today went so well. Um, so yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Today was a great day looking for indigo snakes with uh, a survey team from the Orient Society. Tomorrow we are going to be moving back up into kind of central Georgia, I think, and mostly looking for cane breaks since we have not seen many of those this year. So that being said, I'm going to wrap this video up here. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.